Hi guys, so this video is completely different. As you can see, the title is My Endometriosis Journey. So this is for my ladies and my women who are struggling. One out of 10 women struggle with endometriosis and it's something that it's not talked about. It's a very complicated disease. I am not a doctor. I'm just walking through how I found out my journey. There is going to be some very explicit me talking about how I found out. So if you don't want to hear it, don't watch this video. There's also going to be sort of like a gruesome picture of my surgery at the end that I want to add. So again, just giving you a fair warning. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm just one of the 10 women who had to deal with this. So let's get right into it. This started back in, honestly, it goes back to when I first got my period when I was, I don't know, 13 years old. It was excruciating. I could not go to school. I remember I would lay in the bathroom crying, holding myself, literally being like, this hurts so bad. This isn't normal, but it was normal, right? My mom didn't know any better. So she took me to get birth control. I think I was on birth control at like 16, I don't know, 13, 14 years old because um, I could not do anything. Like I could not go to school. But back then it's like, oh, this is normal. And my entire life, I just thought it was normal. Now, We're going to fast forward. Uh, When I was married, I got off birth control. And after that, my periods were normal. So like like nothing really happened. And I did some research and it says it takes 10 to 15 years for you to actually find out that you have this. However, I never got pregnant while I was married. Thank God. That's a story for a different day, but I'm no longer married. But thank God I didn't. But I never got pregnant and we used no protection. So at that time, I didn't see it as a red flag because I didn't really care to be pregnant that young. Um, So fast forward to 2021 after I got divorced. I remember specifically where I was. I was in Miami and I was taking a shower and I remember just looking down. I had my period and I had blood clots, like a blood clot probably like this big. And I was like, this cannot be normal. But like, I just like chalked it up and I was like, whatever, like it is what it is. My periods were not bad. But when I started noticing something was wrong was when I was getting this bloated. And I'm going to insert pictures throughout the video just to show you how bloated I was. And I was like, it's my food. Like, obviously it's my food. So I will tell you that I, I went untreated for about a year and a half. Um, I'll tell you exactly when I realized there was something really wrong, even though I should have known. I really thought it was my food. I was like, whatever, like I'm just eating. I was drinking a lot because I had just gotten divorced and I was like, I'm gonna just go crazy. Fast forward to, I think it was May of 2023, 2022, May of 2022. I had this pain and I could not, I was still bloated. Like I'll answer pictures of like me being bloated. Um, and I'll talk about how that really fucks with me mentally so bad. And anyone who goes through it, not only is it pain, but I work out every single day, not every day, but like four to five times a week. And I went from not being able to wear crop tops, like now I am, because I'm like, okay, like I'm not bloated. I don't wake up bloated. Like I feel good. But mentally for me, it was really messing with my mental health in a sense where I did not feel confident. I would go to the gym and I would wear baggy clothes because I looked pregnant like when I would wake up, right? So back to me going to the emergency room, which I have never gone to the emergency room my entire life. Thank you, Jesus. I went to the emergency room because I had this pain that I could not walk. I mean, I was on the floor, like I could not walk. I remember I drove myself to the ER. I lived in Dallas and they gave me an MRI. I was there for like, you know, you know how insurance is in the United States. I was there for like, I don't know, 16 hours, nothing happened. They just gave me really strong pills, tramadol, and I don't know, they put something in my veins and it helped me. It took a long time. They took an MRI and they're like, hey, we couldn't find anything. And I was like, yeah, but this isn't normal. Like I can't walk, I can't breathe. Like this could not be normal. So nothing happened. So I kid you not, one day I was laying in bed and my boyfriend was like, hey, like, have you ever looked, like Googled it? And I was like, yeah, I've Googled it, but I don't know where to look. And he's like, have you ever used Reddit before? Tell me why Reddit was the one who told me that I had endometriosis. Mind blown. So thank you, Reddit. Now I am a number one fan of Reddit. It can be a very dark world, but it is an amazing thing. So I literally went on Reddit and I just like started reading the thousands of threads of other women who had the same symptoms. And I was like, holy crap, this, I have endometriosis. So I don't have health insurance. What I have is direct primary care. So I found a direct primary care in Dallas and I remember going to her and I was like, hey, I have endometriosis. And she's like, how do you know? And I was like, well, Reddit told me and I've been dealing with it for two and a half years. So I have it or a year, whatever the timeline was. 
But then I also found out that I had SIBO. So she's like, let's do a test. She's like, your bloating is out of control. She's like, you probably had SIBO. Um, and I did. There was a disgusting test that you had to do. You had to like blow and then you had to um, um, take samples of your, you know what, it was really disgusting, but it came out that I had really bad SIBO. But then I'm like, okay, clearly like everything is connected to your gut, like whatever, like there's something else going on. So I was still on birth control. Everything was fine. And um, eventually I found an endometriosis expert. She was like, hey, I'm just an OBG, you know, I'm just a physician. You need to see an expert. And I did. So I went to see her in Dallas. She was amazing. Um, And I just remember though, she was like, hey, well, actually, let me let me take a step back. They made me go get a ultrasound where they found that I had cysts in my ovaries. Um, that did not show the endometriosis. They just made me go get an ultrasound. So when I went to see the specialist, I was like, well, what's going to happen at the surgery? And she was like, we're just going to go in there with a, oh my gosh, I can't remember the name. Okay. It's a laparoscopy surgery. And I did a lot of research and literally was like, yeah, people, did you just get opened up? And that's when they find out like what's going on. I was just like, so you're just going to go in there with no plan and like, well, just figure out what's wrong with me. I was like, I don't know. I don't like this. It was like $20,000. I didn't have insurance by choice. And I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. So I'm originally from Mexico. But let's before I get to that part, um, throughout the last two years, I have had I've missed events. Um, I missed a bachelorette party. I've missed um, other events. I was in Chicago because when it flares up, it is excruciating pain, you guys. Like I would be on the floor. I have a picture here of me on the floor. And I took this picture only because I wanted to make this video one day and have this picture of just me crying because I had to come home from dinner when I was in Chicago over the 4th of July. I get like thinking about this makes me um, emotional because I felt so helpless. I was like, this cannot be like a thing. So fast forward to I went to Mexico and I found an OBGYN there. She did an ultrasound. She's like, yep, you have two cysts. She's like, but again, endometriosis is such a a difficult thing to treat. He's like, you need to go see a specialist. So I found the best doctor in Leon, Guanajuato, Dr. Edgar, and he had a plan. Like he had a plan, which to me was wild that someone was just, again, I'm not talking shit about anybody, but I'm like, going into surgery is already stressful. Like I want to go and have a plan. And he made me get an MRI. The MRI was able to show, you know, that I had endometriosis, where my cysts were, how big they were. But then he made me get an MRI. It was called a, um, with like, I had some sort of gel inside of me so that it would show exactly when the endometriosis was. Now he was like, so he's like, when I go in there, he's like, and I need this mapping. He called it an MRI mapping. He's like, I need to see this before I go and go inside of you with the laparoscopy. And because if you need like a colonoscopy, like, because if it's stuck in like back there, he's like, I don't want to like in the middle of surgery, be like, oh, hey, let's take a break. See if there's a expert for the colonoscopy. And I was like, oh my God, like he has a freaking plan. Thank you, Jesus. So a month ago, um, I had that MRI done and I had my laparoscopy surgery. And it was supposed to be two and a half hours. It lasted almost seven hours because I was filled with this crap. Before I even went into surgery, he told me, he's like, hey, we're going to have to remove one of your fallopian tubes. I don't know if like birth is something, I mean, natural birth is something that you're going to be able to, which at this point I was like, I'm not too concerned about it. I just want to make sure that I am done feeling bloated and that I have a normal life. And um, I don't know why I'm getting so emotional, but I think that anyone who deals with this knows how horrible it is. And people sometimes just think that you're crazy. And it's like, not only mentally, but physically, like you're tired all the time. And it's such a crazy um, disease. So sorry, I don't know why I got emotional. Um, anyways, so I had my surgery and they went in. I had a laparoscopy surgery for seven hours. Uh, they put in a catheter, a, um, what is that thing that they put in the back when you're giving birth? I can't think of the name right now. An epidural. Um, and they put you under and I went and he's like, this was one of the, he's like, and he told me, he's like, hey, he's like, we weren't, you know, this was one of the longest surgery we've ever had, if not the longest. He's like, you were literally filled. I'm going to put the before and after. Um, before I put it on, I want to warn you that it is a little bit um, like 
disgusting but he's like it was in your colon he's like it was everywhere and i was like i mean i have the video i'm not gonna show it but it was disgusting and i was like wow um so i'll talk about my surgery next and then i want to talk about like if anyone's dealing with this what i would recommend as someone who has been through this um the surgery was not i just couldn't walk i've had my i had breast augmentation done and the the biggest thing with me is that the anesthesia makes me want to vomit. So I would vomit for like all day the first day. Here's another difference between Mexico and the United States. In the United States, they were like, it's an in and out operation. I have no pain tolerance. I can't imagine being in surgery for seven hours and then like releasing me that night. So in Mexico, I stayed overnight. I had, you know, the nurses come in, the doctor come in. I mean, I'm like, I, I honestly cannot imagine leaving that night and going home. But again, that's just my preference. I didn't choose that. The doctor said I would never release someone with endometriosis surgery. Um, again, I'm not talking bad about the health system here. I'm just saying my experience. After that, um, after the first night, I went home and it really, there is a lot of pain on your shoulders because they fill you with gas. So I had a uh, a pad back here from my shoulders that really helped but I would say the first three days as you just can't like you're so tired you can't really walk take it slow it hurts they make incisions in your stomach um but then I would say by five days you were back to normal like I couldn't wear jeans for a little bit because I was still pretty bloated but now it's been two weeks and I feel great I went back to the gym um, I'm lifting now and I am wearing now actual crop tops when I go to the gym or when I go on a walk. And it's a big thing for me because for the last two, three years, I was so embarrassed because 90% of the month I looked like this. Like it's insane. Um, so anyone dealing with this, my suggestion is finding, you have to advocate for yourself. That is a sad thing. You do have to advocate for yourself and you have to know that there, you, you know your body, there is something wrong with it. And you just have to find an endometriosis expert who is going to help you. Again, they did an ultrasound, then they did an MRI, and then they did a mapping of an MRI, which was more in depth just of like down here of what it would look like. Um, but if you're watching this, and if you're going through endometriosis, like I know exactly what you're going through. It sucks, but you just have to be able to get through it, find someone. And that's my experience. Of course, on Reddit, there are great experiences. There's horrible experiences. I just wanted to share my experience. And if you have any more questions, feel free to DM